In this video I'm going to try to talk you through the whole process, or at least my process, of how I groom my little Melshi dog. It's been cold weather here for the last few months and we're just starting to get into a, a hotter period of the year and she's in a fairly desperate need of a good groom. So I want to talk you through how to um, groom your dog at home, at least the way I do it. Uh, and I'll try to cover everything I can think of with all my little tips and tricks that I generally do, which will hopefully make it a, a bit easier for you to groom your dog. But it is just a general video for people to learn how to groom their dog in you know, the home environment. I'll talk you through the process from pre sort of grooming before bathing your dog so removing all the knots and freeing up the hair getting it quite loose I think this is probably the most important step of all uh, and it's it can be overlooked by a home groomer um, when they're first starting out but if you remove all the knots from your dog's coat prior to bathing and prior to clipping you'll just find the process so much easier so I'll show you how I wash Wookie and I'll show you the shampoo I use which is a whitening shampoo. A good dog shampoo should free up the hair, make it uh, untangle slightly and should help uh, frizz up the hair for clipping later on. After washing the dog I'll show you how to fluff up the hair prior to clipping um, which is a fairly easy process. And then I'll give Wookie a quick uh, clip. I won't go too short, I won't totally shave her because it's still a little bit cold here. But I will give her a bit of a clip to neaten up the hair because she's looking rather shaggy. And at the end I'll probably do a bit of a face trim as well. She has a lot of hair irritating her eyes at the moment along the bridge of the nose. So I'll remove that hair as well when I give her face a clip. So prior to giving your dog a wash, as I said before, it's really important to remove all the knots from the hair and free the hair up as much as possible because this just makes the clipping process so much faster. The tools I use are a short bristle brush. I mainly use this for the face and for the ears. You can use it for the entire coat, but you'll find it won't penetrate far into the, the, um, the coat of the dog. If you solely rely on this you'll find you'll leave a lot of knots down deep close to the skin and when you go to clip the dog uh, your clippers will just get stuck in knots. So the other tool that I absolutely love is a dematting comb. So if you haven't seen a dematting comb before they have a serrated edge on the back of the um, comb. The idea behind the comb is that you run the comb through the hair until you find a point of resistance where there's a knot or some matting of the hair and then you withdraw the, the serrated edge of the comb while pulling it against the, the knot. So the edge of the comb that is serrated will break down the knot. Um, as you pull it towards you, it sort of brings the knot up away from the skin. When you find a large knot, you can just draw the knot out of the coat a bit to the surface of the hair and then remove it with scissors. You don't have to go to the trouble of slowly removing the knot by just continually going over the same point. You'll also need some scissors for any larger knots you find. Um, just for the dog, it's easier to chop them out where you can. You can use the uh, dematting tool to remove the knots, to bring them out. Um, but if they're just too, too large for the sake of the dog, um, I will just chop them out. You won't generally notice it, especially if you're doing a short shave. I find underneath the stomach, underneath the, the body of the dog, underneath the armpits, um, of the dog under the ears. I'll just use scissors to chop out the knots. I won't go to the trouble of trying to um, demat the area because under the ears you generally shave fairly short. Um, under the stomach, under the armpits, I always try to keep the hair short. And in these areas that you will find more knots generally. It's where you get uh, more of a build-up of dirt. 
more likely that the dog will get uh, water on the coat underneath the body, under the arms, and so you'll always end up with more tangles. And with the fact that you just can't really see the undercarriage, I always typically shave this area fairly short. It's not going to get sunburnt, not unless your dog likes to sunbake with its stomach facing towards the sun. So when you're dematting the dog, uh, try to concentrate on under the ears. You'll find more knots under the ears. Uh, also on the front of the, the legs and under the, the armpit or under the back of the legs. You'll find more knots there, so I demat through that area. Uh, underneath the body and the back of the legs anywhere like a what I would call an armpit sort of region um, you're more likely to get knots uh, especially if the dog can't access you know that part of their body they're, they're not likely to have tried to groom the area themselves so try to be as thorough as you can the, the more time you spend on this the easier the rest of the process will be now if your dog isn't used to being groomed don't try to do this entire process in one day it's fine to slowly demat and give your dog a comb over multiple days uh, if your dog's young a puppy or just hasn't been groomed that often it, you'll find it's just so much easier on the dog to space out your grooming sessions especially at this point so I've already groomed Wookie probably two or three times in the last week preparing her for this wash because I have let her get rather shaggy um, so I'll just spend a bit of extra time now trying to get any um, knots out okay and as you can see now she's a good bit fluffier than before uh, especially along the, the legs uh, the hair's gone from that curly sort of uh, matted look to being a little bit more fluffy and raised out but that's definitely what what you want to see you want to try to fluff out the hair as much as you can so you can give her a good wash and so that later on clipping will be so much easier now when you're just with the dog giving the dog a little scratch or patting the dog it's good to mimic the positions you like to hold the dog in when you're grooming so for me i like to get my dog uh, wookie and get her onto the back and give her a good tickle or a good pat a good scratch during the week this just makes it easier for when i have to do something like chopping uh, the knots out from underneath her undercarriage so she's just used to this position she sort of relates it to being patted and you know happy times so it's good to try to mimic the behavior of, of a groom while you're giving your dog attention during the week when you're giving your, your dog a good pat or a good scratch. Now it's important to take breaks or at least take a break out of the groom to give the dog a bit of praise and give it a good scratch, good pat. I know Wookie loves a scratch under the ears and it will just settle her down a bit more and make the process a bit more fun. If you just try to groom the dog from start to finish without any form of reward, it will be just a much harder process for the dog. Another great idea okay, is to whoops. use treats. Dogs respond in a very positive fashion to treats. So I suggest using treats wherever you can while you're grooming the dog. They will be more settled and, and behave for you. You can already see results with this dematting comb. Just running along the back there you can see that the hair is starting to loosen up and to frizz up a little bit which is exactly what you want. Try at this point to be really thorough. If the dog doesn't uh, want you grooming that area, loosening up an, a matted area of hair, try to move on to a different point on the body but be sure to come back and to get the entire knot out. It will only make it easier for when you go to clip the dog. I've also started to use a ear cleaning product. Uh, you don't have to do this at all. 
but as you can see Wookie will shake her head every now and then and that's because she's got a bit of an ear infection in one ear. We have taken her to the vet um, before for this problem. It can be a problem that occurs with Melshi dogs. It's okay. um, it's it. At least with our Wookie, the problem is that she has an excess of earwax in just one ear. So a solution is to clear out the wax and you can do that with a product that ear cleaning product. So we do this over say a three to five day period uh, and then it seems to clear it up but it does over time recur unfortunately. So I tend to do this prior to washing Wookie on a few days leading up to it because it is a bit messy. The product basically clears out the earwax which means it has to go somewhere and it will typically go down the side of their, their face, unfortunately. Um, so doing this prior to, to the wash is a good idea. You don't have to do this at all, of course. It's only <laughs> if your dog also has a problem with its ears, uh, an irritation of some form, and you could try this out as well. step in grooming is fairly simple so I'll, I'll try to get through it fairly quickly so you need to wet the entire coat of the dog um, try to be rather thorough to get it all all nice and wet with the water make sure it's lukewarm um, it's actually better to be a bit cold um, than hot uh, you'll find if the water is hot the dog will overheat fairly quickly and, and once it's out of the water then it will get extremely cold so the cool cool to warm water is best make sure you use an ample amount of um, shampoo as i said before this is a whitening shampoo made for dogs i'll put the link uh, down below of the product i use when you're applying it be careful to not get the um, shampoo in the dog's eyes obviously um, but be quite thorough everywhere else, uh, apply quite a, quite a generous amount. I always use the um, short bristle brush at this point to help free up the hair. So if there are any fine little tangles in the hair, fine knots, you'll find once the shampoo is applied, if you then brush the dog after this point, it will free up all the hair really well. Using the brush will help spread the shampoo, it will help uh, move around any dirt and it will free up the hair from any small tangles. Once the dog is fully lathered up with the shampoo, I spend extra time combing the legs and the feet. Uh, you find a lot of dirt uh, in, the, in the feet especially. When you do rinse the dog off, be extremely thorough. Any shampoo left in the coat will make it harder to frizz the hair up, which does help with clipping the dog, and it can irritate the skin. Uh, the, the shampoo can have quite a different pH to the dog's skin. All dogs, even male to female, between the same breed will have a different pH in their skin. So you do really want to spend some extra time yeah. Uh, washing off absolutely yeah. all of the product. Yeah. Now when we dry the dog I always start with the towel to get most of the, the water off the dog uh, and then I use a hair dryer. You could buy a grooming uh, blower to actually blow and force the water out of the hair. Uh, they don't have any heat, they just push the water. I just find a hair dryer works fine for me. I just put it on the coldest setting uh, mine also has a button that I can hold down so it has no heat. Uh, if you use any heat, don't stay in the one spot for too long. You, will, you can definitely hurt the dog and they can overheat really badly if you apply too much heat. So as you can see I use the brush as I'm blow drying the dog and this will frizz the hair up really well. As you go you will see areas where the water is still in the coat. 
uh, they, it stands out quite quite easily once the dog's hair gets frizzy. Their hair can be hard to brush when it's really wet. Sometimes I wait until their hair is dried out a bit, uh, either spend extra time with the towel to dry the dog or just give the dog a good blow dry uh, without the comb for a while until you can notice the hair starting to frizz up. Uh, once it starts to dry out and separate a bit then it'll be easier to brush. Supporting the dog's limbs or skin with your hand or just a finger can really help while you're brushing the dog. Always try to do this when you're brushing the dog either even before washing or during this drying process. I find uh, just a hand under the leg. Uh, you can cradle the leg. Um, once the dog is used to this, it can rely on you to hold its leg up for it and it becomes easier. When I'm brushing the side of the dog, the skin is rather loose. If you just pull against the skin with the brush, you'll probably hurt the dog. Um, they won't like that, they'll let you know. So I often put a hand around the other side of the body um, and I have my hand underneath the belly to support the dog as I'm doing this. Sometimes I have like a thumb up on the back holding the skin tight. If the dog's hair is allowed to grow as long as Wookie's has here, the drying will take a lot longer and it's a, a good bit more difficult to brush the hair and to fully dry it out. Uh, shorter hair is always just an easier option with grooming. If you maintain a short coat, drying out the hair like this and brushing it is always a lot quicker, a lot faster process. When you are drying your dog, if you have a long haired coat on the dog, it is really important to thoroughly dry the hair, especially under the ears and I find on the front of the dog, under its chin, down its chest. If you allow the the hair to be wet for a very long period of time, say in winter, uh, you can have uh, problems with fungal issues on the skin. I haven't had this problem with Wookie before, but I have in the past had a golden retriever, and this was a very uh, common problem with that dog. And as you can see, she's getting nice and frizzy. The hair is loosening up and drying out quite well. Uh, it always looks nice and pretty at this point. Uh, I never dry the face, uh, not at least not with the air dryer, um, just to protect the eyes. So I'll use a towel on the on the face, and then just let the the face dry naturally, just to protect the eyes from being dried out. And there we go, one very fluffy dog. Uh, you can see just with how loose the hair is and how fluffed up it is. You can just imagine how easy. Uh, the clippers will go through the coat uh, compared to when we first started where the hair was all matted and, and clumped together. And now it's time to give Wookie a clip. I normally will wash Wookie uh, on one day of the week, uh, dry her and then I'll give her a break for the rest of the day. Generally the next day I'll then give her a clip. I like to space it out a bit so that she's more relaxed. You just can't leave it for too long. The longer you leave the clipping, uh, the, the more tangles the dog will get in the hair and the harder it will be to clip the dog. I use a battery powered, uh, pretty cheap clipper. I think if you had a cord version, it would be a little bit more powerful and make the job a little bit quicker for the dog. But this battery uh, version works quite well. Uh, start with the largest comb you have because you can always take a little bit more off. Generally the way I will clip the dog is use the large comb first and then come back over the coat later on and neaten it up with a slightly smaller comb. I pick an area up towards the, the shoulders of the dog on its back and I start uh, giving the dog a shave in that spot. Uh, once you get through into the lower section of the coat, 
uh, it will be a lot easier to move the clippers through the hair. I will always start at one spot and then spread out from that point. It's much easier to move the comb from a shaved section into denser hair, so working your way out is easier once you get that initial bit of hair gone. So I run with the hair when I first start, so I shave or clip the dog in the direction that the hair naturally lays. Uh, you won't get a perfectly neat um, finish this way, but you can come back later and go against the, the natural lay of the hair. When you do this, you'll find you'll clip a lot more hair and, and get deeper into the, the coat. So I like to start by moving with the hair uh, and trying to get a uniform trim before possibly coming back. On the legs, I will shave with the clippers to about halfway down the leg and then just slowly fare out the, um, the hair. I never move the clippers up the leg. Unlike the back, I'll go against the hair, but on the legs I just go down. Now, a professional groomer will most likely use thinning shears to do a lot of shaping on the dog. Uh, you can give this a try instead of using clippers, but for a general clip at home, starting this way with clippers is just a lot quicker. On the side of the dog, always try to move the clippers from the top of the back down to the belly. If you move across the, the belly, across the side, you will leave noticeable clipper marks. With the legs, I will come back probably tomorrow with some thinning shears to just thin them out a little bit more and take the longer hair off. I just find it it's much easier than using actual clippers. I tend to find more knots around the legs, around the feet, um, and then with the different joints, it's a little bit harder to use clippers. I always tend to take too much hair off when using clippers on the legs. Shave as much hair off as you can under the ears. I start from the back of the head, uh, work down the neck, and go under the ears and re remove quite a bit of hair. Um, you don't want a build-up of hair there, you want a bit of an air gap um, just to help air, the ears breathe and get air circulating through them to keep them healthier. So towards the end of the clip I will flip Wookie over onto her back and give her stomach a shave. Normally I don't bother using a comb in the clippers at this point, where I use a very fine one. Uh, I tend to take most of the hair off from under the stomach, under the arms, and under the back of the legs. With the feet, I'll come back tomorrow with scissors and just neaten up around the feet. Um, I find it easier if the dog has its foot on the ground, and then I basically just trace around the foot with the scissors. After the first basic pass, and the dog's looking fairly neat, I come back with the clippers and just do another another trim and this time I just go a lot slower and take my time. You find you will take off just a little bit more hair when if you go a little bit slower when you're moving the clippers and you'll get a more even finish. Like I said before you could put on a smaller uh, comb at this point and just go slow and you'll finish up the coat and it'll look a lot more even than what it is at this point. After the clip, Wookie's always very keen for a game. I always give her a good pat and play a game with her and try to make the process fun. It's important I think to take breaks whenever you can, make it enjoyable play games, give treats, and the dog will behave better the next time. Um, and then coming up next we've got the face groom. 
I try to keep the grooming onto the face really simple and quick. I tend to use the clippers for the majority of the work. I just use some thinning shears to thin out the, the cuts that I make, um, especially around the jawline. Investing in a good pair of thinning shears is a good idea. You can get uh, different variations. Um, some are smaller, which are more suitable for the face, and some will take out more hair than others. Uh, the idea of them is to just slowly blend uh, the hair or blend the cut that you make by leaving some hair behind. Thinning shears can be a bit tricky to use. Uh, it takes a bit, bit of time to learn how to use them properly. My main advice for using thinning shears would be not to overextend them. Uh, you don't open them the whole way up and to make a cut and as you cut start pulling it towards yourself and make multiple cuts so you keep thinning out the hair as you go uh, the whole idea of them is to just blend the cut so if you cut with standard scissors on the jawline then you can come back with the thinning shears and just blend it in so i use clippers down the side of the face beside the ear and then under the jawline it's just so much easier than using thinning shears the only one problem i have to be honest is uh, the top of the head i can often get this a little bit wrong i generally now i use the thinning shears i fluff the hair up a bit and just try to thin it out with the ears i always comb the ears check where the skin finishes so that you don't cut the dog and then use a, a curved blade if you can to, to make the cut. Uh, you'll find you might have to do a number of temps. Well I hope you enjoyed the video uh, and hopefully you, you've learnt something helpful or useful. Um, Wookie does look a lot nicer right now and we'll see you on one of the next videos.